Hey everybody, welcome back to Jeff Bowles Central. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a vlog, like a standard vlog thing. <laughs> it's like really old school YouTube. I'm not sure how popular those are anymore, but I wanted to like talk at you instead of just straight up entertain you or review a game or whatever it is. Um, I suppose it was about half a year ago I made a video uh, called uh, Writing in Mental Illness. Um, and I kind of wanted to give another look at that, uh, or maybe sort of an update. Maybe that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to update you on where I'm at right now, because, uh, I don't know, man, I don't know if you're like me, but, um, COVID has been really, really pressurizing. Like it's really, really, really pressurizing to me. Like, uh, I feel scared sometimes i suppose i feel pent up i feel like i've been stuck in the house for years at this point um just to kind of recap for those who don't know i have um schizoaffective disorder which is basically schizophrenia with uh, a bipolar component so um i i have everything that a schizophrenic has i have hallucinations, uh, delusions, um, you know, hearing voices, uh, phantom smells, and um, reality that is unreality uh, sometimes. <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain. Um, so for me, and I've always been a kind of a depressed person like, here and there, which is, I don't care to admit that. Like, I don't mind. I wear that on my sleeve. But, um, yeah, COVID, COVID and, and I'm in, a, I'm in the U.S. and the election. What is up with this election, man? Um, both those things. I don't have any personal family or relationship drama happening at all. But those two things have really cranked up the anxiety on me. I've had to adjust medications and I've had to um, find all sorts of tools for just calming myself down because um, when I get riled or upset in any way too much, um, the bad stuff starts and I have to kind of duck and then cover, <laughs> um, as it were. But there is a bright uh, side to this, and that's the fact that I'm also a writer, um, in addition to being a musician. Um, and I started writing another book. Um, I put my last one out early part of summer, uh, so I'm starting on an another one, the next one. Um, and I kind of wanted to speak to that. I, I've developed for myself... Um, my own kind of writing method that makes sure that I get the work done. It's really, really important for me to get the work done. It's really important to be productive when I want to be productive and to rest and recuperate and get my mind straight when I want to. Um, so basically what I do as a writer, I write at least 400 words a day. Um, and then I log it in a spreadsheet. <laughs> like, that's all I do. But if you, for those of you who aren't um, professional writers, uh, the word count per day thing, if you're a fiction writer, is very, very important. Part of people's routines. Don't fuck with it because you, you can bring down the whole house of cards. I used to write about 2,000 words per day before, um, before I developed schizoaffective disorder, which, which, is, which was good. I was very productive, so I've had to learn to readjust and to become okay with 400, which is uh, paltry. At that rate, it takes you about, if you do it every day, uh, about, about six, six months to write a book, which is... A long time for me um, for a draft a book because you spend maybe another six months editing and revising and stuff and trying to make it as good as you can before you release it or try to find a publisher or whatever you're doing. 
Um, you know, I, I, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say about um, being an advocate for teaching people about schizophrenia or mental illness. Certainly, I understand it better uh, than most people would just because I suffer from it. Uh, and I also understand the transition that takes place between having an episode where you're totally, completely lost uh, in the delusional, hallucinatory processing environments that you, that you go through. If you're curious at all, just look up on YouTube here. Just look up uh, uh, Schizophrenia Simulators. It'll give you kind of an idea what it's like when it's at its worst. But for, for I don't want to say most of us, for many of us, it kind of comes and goes and waves. Um, but there is a point where you can, you can still be having hallucinations. You can still be, for instance, hearing voices but you can know that it's not real. And that's the difference between having a full-blown episode and kind of being in between episodes. Now, I didn't develop schizoaffective until I was 31 years old, um, 36 now, and I've only had one episode, but it was, it was really bad. Uh, it was a really, really bad episode. Um, things went just totally sideways in my life and only recently have I started to feel like I can trust life again. It was, it was pretty nasty. Um, but I just, I'd like to communicate the fact that when you see crazy people, quote, 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 crazy people in movies, um, or if you have this idea of quote, 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 crazy people, just mentally ill people that, that it's uh, dark or scary or in some ways unsavory. I'd like that if I could have one wish about this, I'd like that to be banished because it's not, it's not that. It, I mean, it is, it's, it can be scary, um, especially if you're out of control uh, and the people around you can't control you, um, there is always help, especially in this day and age. Even if, you're, even if you had, don't have insurance, um, even, if you, even if you don't have many friends and family, there's always resources available. There's always um, internet resources. There's always phone resources. You can always stay at a mental health facility for a couple weeks. I know that that doesn't sound great, but I did, um, and it helped me. Those places are not scary either, really. Not as, not as bad as they're made to be. I mean, there's, <laughs> I mean, mileage varies on that because there are some facilities that have a tendency to maybe be on the abusive end of things. But the one I stayed at, um, here in Colorado was not so bad. I did okay. Um, and I gradually started feeling better. I mean, it was a long time from there until here, but, uh, if you're having mental health issues right now because of COVID, because of anything, anything at all, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people having a lot of dramas right now. I just, it's, it's, um, kind of hard to navigate for some people, for a lot of people, it's, it's rough. It's rough out there. Um, just know that, that there is help. There are resources. Don't be ashamed and don't be afraid to reach out, honestly, because it's important. Uh, it's important because your life is on the line. Okay. That's just, that's just a fact. Um, and it's important because if you're not taking care of yourself in this way, uh, your family and your friends and everybody you know and come into contact with, um, 
you're not going to be at your best, let's say. And you may have a tendency to mess up some stuff, mess up some relationships, mess up career, family. So if you're, if you're feeling okay, you realize that you want those things, that those are good things. And if you're not feeling okay, you may not realize that. So it's important to take care of yourself, especially at this time. I would say that to everybody. I would say everybody is a little bit uh, depressed. Take care of yourself, okay? All of you, every single person watching this video, even if it only gets five views, take care of yourself, five people. Um, take care of yourself, nurture yourself. Uh, get some time to do the things that calm you. Make the time. So, uh, it's important. Um, and um, as far as the writing is going, it's going pretty well. I just started this book. I'm excited for that. Um, and uh, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. I might do this again um, sometime soon, just to, to kind of keep talking about it. Um, it is an aspect of my life that is unavoidable, um, and it's an aspect of my life that is very, very, very present and can be very powerful and um, controlling. Um, so that's it. Most of the time, guys, on this channel, it's video games and music! <laughs> uh, but not tonight. Not tonight. That's all I gotta say. Check next time. That's it. Bye-bye.